let's move on and talk about X-Men Apocalypse, which came out two short years later after Days of Future Past. So this movie was announced by Brian Singer in December 2013 on Twitter. Um, this was before Days of Future Past was released to theaters. So they were developing this film while Days of Future Past was still in post-production. Um, according to Brian Singer, the film would focus on the origin of mutants and feature the younger versions of Cyclops, Jean Grey, and Storm. Singer also said he was considering Gambit and a younger version of, younger version of Nightcrawler to appear. Nightcrawler is in the movie. Gambit is not. Um, and according to Simon Kinberg, the screenwriter, it will take place in 1983 and complete the trilogy that began with X-Men's First Class. So another 10-year time jump that, that's taking place here. Um, ultimately, in September of 2014, 20th Century Fox announced that Singer would direct the movie. And Brian Singer called the film, quote, kind of a conclusion of six X-Men films, yet a potential rebirth of younger, newer characters and the true birth of the X-Men, end quote. Um, Apocalypse, similar question to, to the Days of Future Past question. Huge story, huge character, not done before in live action. How did you feel about this, knowing that we were coming off of Days of Future Past, especially considering they did have a post credit scene that alluded to the fact that they were going to go in this direction with this movie? What's so interesting about this movie is the, the marketing was already pissing me off, like, <laughs> <laughs> like early, <laughs> early. Um, man, I've talked about it in length. Uh, Apocalypse is one of my favorite X-Men villains. I uh, seen him. I just seen him get done so well in evolution um, that I was like, y'all better bring this thing. Like, I need y'all to come with it. Like, this is not <laughs> a small story. Um, but I was still, like, I think, excited to see potentially what it could be again, especially after we had, I think, more of a, a, a bombastic landscape of the MCU. What some of those bigger movies could look like. You know what I mean? What some of that CGI could look like. What some of those bigger set pieces could look like. Um, and again, the, the market was already making me mad because the look of Oscar Isaac was already like a whole thing, but I was still behind still the idea for the film. Like, hell yeah. Okay. Y'all have done a lot. I guess y'all kind of tried to tackle dark Phoenix didn't do so well, but they kind of, they slowly was like earning my trust back. Right. First class is good. Days of future past is good. All right. Let's try apocalypse then. If y'all want to do it, let's do it. And, and, and so I remember still being, apprehensive for sure because it is a story i like so much um but but also also uh, i'm still excited at the same time uh so yeah man it was it was it was a very weird moment <laughs> i think for me when when apocalypse is coming out because it's like y'all were doing decent don't mess it up um and eventually they end up messing it up after this movie comes out but yeah that's that's kind of my relationship with the film i definitely seen it in theaters um i was i was ready for it to come out but yeah the market end was like already kind of pissing me off in the beginning yeah i was i was genuinely excited for it. like i didn't have any hesitations or reservations coming into it just because they had two mm -hmm. bangers on the hands with, with first class and days of future past i'm like okay we're, we're back we're, we're doing it we're doing well i remember yeah. there was a period december of 2015 within like a two-week stretch trailers for x-men apocalypse captain america civil war and Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice dropped within like two weeks of each other. I'm like, oh, we're we're so fucking back. We're we're so here. It was a <laughs> glorious time. Not seeing any of the movies at that point, obviously, just just anticipating them, just being excited for them. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. thinking like we're getting Civil War, we're getting Apocalypse, yeah, we're getting Batman versus Superman. Like, I couldn't even think mm -hmm. of that shit eight years before this, ten years before this. We've talked about those original movies. It's like we'd be lucky if we see fucking Robin on screen or something, just like something real minuscule, you know, like to think that Absolutely. we were doing these huge epic stories. I mean, I was so excited. I was ready. The look of apocalypse. When I saw him, I'm like, mm, okay, that's not great, but I'm like, that's not going to necessarily de de determine the quality of the movie, but just the general excitement around it. It was palpable for me for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And then in November of 2014, we found out that Oscar Isaac, would be portraying Apocalypse. And so um, this is interesting because this technically he's announced as a character before we see him Star Wars The Force Awakens, which is kind of a breakout role for him. He, of course, had been doing a lot of work. He was in Inside Llewellyn Davis, a big, big, big film for him from a dramatic standpoint. But Oscar Isaac, in watching this movie, I don't know, man, is he the right guy to be Apocalypse? Like, very talented actor, obviously really, really charismatic. Um, and has done great work, has a lot of variety of, uh, across his work, and, and, and certainly can hold the screen. But I don't know if he's really the right one for this particular character, because Apocalypse is such a such a grandiose, huge presence, you know, and just all the mediums that we see him in. And, and Oscar Isaac, I don't know if he necessarily matches up to that to that aesthetic that they're looking for with that character. Yeah, this is one of those moments I wish we 
we leaned into the body one person voice a different person you know what i'm saying like we should have so we should have got some big dude <laughs> out of somewhere you know what i'm saying and, and kind of hit him with the you know the darth vader or like you know what i mean like make the voice somebody else Can you imagine like tony todd as apocalypse or something you know what i'm saying or keith david or like keith we should have got david. somebody we should have got somebody with <laughs> keith david would be hilarious by the yeah. way but we should have got somebody with that voice though you know what i'm saying apocalypse is supposed to be like just this overbearing presence and oscar isaac you know he i don't know oscar isaac has the chops that's the thing i think they were going for they were like isaac oscar isaac we know he could play the role but we do need somebody with that physical presence as well. And, and he was just small. And Pac was not supposed to be a small dude. He's supposed to be a pretty big dude. And so um, I think we should have, I think we should have did like a body voice type thing for sure. Yeah. I, or or what about an approach like what they did with Thanos, like full CGI. If the, they could have pulled it have, off, hell have, yeah. Have the, have the likeness of, you know, Josh Brolin obviously did Thanos. He doesn't physically, I mean, he does the motion capture, of course, on set like they do with, uh, yeah. with uh, Mark Ruffalo and the Hulk. But, you know, to create that physical presence, they they went with the CGI creation, but we still get the features, the mannerisms, the voice of Josh Brolin. So you still get the performance. You still get the actor. Yep. You know, I think that that's exactly. like the perfect medium. Um, but they wanted to do something practical, which I'm not mad at. You know, practical mm -hmm. is, is always going to age better at the end of the day. But yeah, Oscar Isaac, um, just from a physicality standpoint, isn't quite there. And I think that, that that that's a lot of what makes the movie not the greatest you know is just how believable is he really and and mm -hmm. oscar isaac does have the chops but does apocalypse need like a bunch of you know acting prowess in this movie it's pretty simple i think it's it's yeah. pretty it's pretty simple <laughs> um especially how they you know sort of portrayed him in this particular film um but also brian singer had announced as he was casting this movie that alexandra ship sophie turner and Ty Sheridan would portray Young Storm, Gene, and Cyclops, respectively. Uh, so now we are just, like, fully throwing continuity out the window. Like, the shit's just gone because we're in the 80s. I mean, it, it was already gone before this. and It was already gone. That's one of the <laughs> – yeah. I can't even harp on it because it's just so many issues. Like, it, it can really bother you. But um, now we're really leaning into younger characters, and we got these younger actresses portraying them. Um how do you feel about their performances in the movie? You know, they 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 become, you know, part of the bigger ensemble. We're seeing these younger versions. But this is this is our new X-Men now. Essentially, you know, we've essentially retired that original cast. We've reset the timeline. And so we're kind of starting from scratch with new actors, somewhat new stories, especially as it relates to um, how they come into the movie with their relationship with Apocalypse and other characters. Ah, oh, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. This movie was driving me up a wall. Uh, it was something I don't know. I don't know why I was so gatekeepy with like characters and like. I just remember being like, not, <laughs> not uh, not not this storm again. Like, is this what we're doing? Is this what we're going through Mohawk Storm again? And in in hindsight and watching it again, I, I don't. I actually hate this movie less when i watched it recently i was like okay i don't dislike it as much as i used to dislike it i still don't like it i don't still don't think it's a good movie but there there's some things about it i think i, I start to to think about and, and, and make sense of and i think they're just trying to tie the thread of these characters to their future counterparts they were like okay well who looks like a young holly berry so they got another light skin girl mm -hmm. <laughs> through her in cairo which is accurate to where storm was raised even though she was born in harlem um and and it was like okay cool uh and 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 man uh i like sophie turner and it's probably not her fault but it's something about it i was just like is this the gene gray that we want is this the gene gray that we need i don't know what it was about the film and i think a lot of it was just story beats a lot of it was just the film or the way the movie felt but something about this casting something about like you said, these are these are our big three original. Really, these are, these are, these are our original X Men for real, for real. Mm -hmm. Like these are who we are supposed to have. I don't know if they're giving me what they're supposed to give me at this time. I, and part of me doesn't even like the idea of introducing Apocalypse in our big three in the same movie. It's like, are we sure this, we should be doing this all at the same time? You know what I mean? So yeah, it, I don't think it was none of the actors' fault per se, but it's something about the environment, something about the way Oscar Isaac looked in the story of the movie. And, all this stuff going on, I was like, I don't know how I feel about this casting. So I remember at the time being like, Ooh, I don't, I don't know how, I don't really like any of this. But, but again, in high side of rewatching it, I still understand what they were trying to do to bridge that gap between where our young, where the young, these young characters would be, and where and and uh, the, who they would end up as. And I think 
to that degree, they might have done a good job casting. But yeah, it was just I think it was a weird time to introduce them in this way. Yeah, I mean, for all intents and purposes, this is another reboot, you know, and Mm -hmm. to do a reboot with a new cast of X-Men, young X-Men, in addition to an apocalypse storyline, which is something that you do at the end is pretty wild decision making it just doesn't it doesn't add up of course i know that they're looking at it from a from a business standpoint and of course again after days of future past is such, such a success the the whole notion in hollywood is how to how to up the ante how to increase the stakes how to make it bigger more spectacle we want to make more money we want everybody to see the fucking movie and they're trying to compete with the mcu who was they were doing these huge things like civil war at the time and the avengers movies like they're looking for the biggest and best ways so I know the pressure was on to try to go big, but it's it's just it, it cohesively doesn't make sense and it doesn't work. And then the actors themselves, mm-hmm. because Gene and Cyclops and Storm are so important, I don't know if these three actors are the ones to do it. Like I like them all individually, but yeah. were they right for this at this particular time? I'm not sure about that. I don't know if this was necessarily the way to go. Um, but not only that, the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse was a big story element here too. You know, because that is a big mm-hmm. element to the apocalypse mythos we get magneto to join the side of apocalypse he has a huge tragedy in the movie his family his wife and his daughter are killed uh we also get storm to join on the four horsemen side of things and then we get angel played by ben hardy who joins on the four uh the four horsemen and uh last but not least olivia munn was cast as psylocke in this movie so again another huge beat from the comics another very very important important sort of adversarial team you know for the x-men that could have had a lot to do but they are sort of relegated to the side here um, with very small beats that that, that I, I suppose add motivation to why they join on Apocalypse's side. But it all just feels very rushed, very not well thought out. Besides Magneto, who probably had the best motivation, but the rest of them, it's like, yeah, we're, we're just kind of speeding through this for 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 reasons that are that are unknown to me. But I guess it's just so much things that they tried to include in the movie. That's where they ended up at. Yeah, it's annoying, man, to see. I think because we just talked about uh, I think how to include those side characters or more mutants and X-Men so well that they did in first class like they did in Days of Future Past. It was like, oh, shoot. OK, a couple cameos. And then here you're like, y'all are introducing like big X-Men now. You know what I'm saying? It's different from like, here's a Zazel. And of course, Emma Frost is important, but she had a, actually a decent big role in the movie. You know what I'm saying? It's like, OK, that's a big X-Men, but they did some stuff with her. Y'all, I know y'all not about to slide by Storm. What are we doing? Like, what are we doing with Storm? Nightcrawler was barely used in the movie. He was there for, like, some weird comedic relief. Also, continuity errors. Whatever that's about. Um, And then, a lot of candor, as Jubilee was just talking about. I didn't see a one firework. Not a one. (laughs) I thought even, like, playing at the mansion or something, we would see a firework. Or, like, you know what I'm saying? And then, oh, my God. And then Psylocke. Okay, this is is the last person I'm going to talk about. Psylocke is legit one of the she has one of the craziest histories in like X-Men mm. in terms of her story mm. and what she has to do and what she's supposed to do and how she's made. She's actually very confusing. I ain't gonna get I ain't gonna lie to you. Psylocke's history is confusing as shit. Like she comes from so many different places. She's Psylocke at one point, Canon at another point, uh uh Captain Britain at another point. It's very confusing. But then they just make her nothing. She's just like, here I am, I'm Psylocke. The look amazing oh, they killed a silent look, look actually yeah. she looked fantastic in this movie but why is she here <laughs> we don't know why she she's just kind of there to kind of hey apocalypse i'll be by your side it's weird man but yeah i it, it was very unfortunate what they did with this cast yeah i uh, again just huge disappointing stuff because you you don't want to see them go out this way you don't want to get them you don't want to see them underutilized in such a massive capacity the movie just tried to do too much they they were just trying to do way too much with this film uh again i think there was just pressure to compete and to try to create a huge massive ensemble movie with world ending stakes literally world ending stakes um which by the way the CGI in this movie is so questionable and so not great at a lot of points. <laughs> I mean, I, by the third act, when everything is just getting fucking destroyed, it's like floating circular de- de- debris and garbage in the sky. It's like, what is what? Why? What, what are we doing this for? There's one scene of a cargo ship that looks like a PS1 video game. I mean, they <laughs> they really they really definitely I think needed to go back to, you know, revisiting some of the CGI cuz I think they just mm-hmm. they just got way ahead of themselves and tried to do too much and they just tried to create this huge spectacle, this heightened reality um which they hadn't really done before. You know, a lot of these movies were 
ironically enough, kind of grounded, you know, um, even though there was yeah. fantastical elements, of course, but mm-hmm. to deal with something on this scale, it was just a drastic jump from where we were with first class and even days of future past to a certain extent. And so a lot of that, a lot of that stuff just didn't make it uh, make, make sense at all. Um, you mentioned Jubilee. It was funny because the scene in the movie, uh, they go to watch return of the Jedi in theaters. Cause it takes place in 1983 <laughs> uh, Jubilee and crew walk out and she argues that empire strikes back is still among the best star wars movies and and scott argues that the first one is still the best pretty reasonable argument um but this is an illusion you know obviously to the fact that x-men the last stand the third film in that trilogy was not great but ironically enough probably little did they know the very third film that they were in that they were making would end up being the worst of the three that they made thus far um the irony be careful what you fucking wish for because i like why would you do that to yourself you you thought you had a classic on your hands? Like, why would you include that type of scene in this movie? It just doesn't doesn't make sense to me at all. Um, there's a, also another like allusion to, to 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 the future. You know, the the movie's ending was originally meant to be a double tease of a of a Gambit film that was still in development at that time. You remember Channing Tatum was supposed to be Gambit, mm-hmm. um, and so the movie's final scene involves the Essex Corporation. And also, Mr. Sinister was going to appear in that Gambit movie, and and they were possibly yep. going to try to tie those things in. And I do remember thinking about that, like, oh, yeah, they do still have Mr. Sinister that they haven't tapped into yet. Um, was that something you were even excited about, especially, like, considering that this happened at the end of the movie, and I'm sure by the end of it, you're like, yeah, that wasn't that great. Uh, and y'all are trying to do Mr. Sinister <laughs> next? Like, I don't know how to feel about that. It felt backwards to me. What It's also funny, at the time, I remember seeing it in theaters. A lot of people didn't understand that postcard scene at all. Like, a lot of people were like, Yeah, if you didn't know, you really didn't know. If you didn't know, you really didn't know. But I was like, oh, yeah, Mr. Sinister. I know exactly what's happening here. But it's, yeah, it it, it, it felt like one of those things that was backwards. It was like, wait, y'all thought y'all were going to do Mr. Sinister after Apocalypse? (laughs) That's crazy. (laughs) It's like, it's in the name. Like, Apocalypse is literally in the, it's, I don't know what order we thought we were doing things in. It's just very weird to me. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, I I, I think I, what's crazy is as bad as this movie is, I still was like, oh, Mr. Sinister is around the corner. Like in my mind, I'm like, oh, they're making another movie. Mr. Sinister is going to be in it. So that's all I really thought at the time. Um, Yeah, just baffling. Yeah, it, it definitely was backwards. It was definitely like not the way to go. I think strategically in terms of like building up an escalation, they, they should have flipped mm-hmm. things and did something different here. Um, Is there anything you like about this movie in particular? Like, is there anything that stands out like, oh, yeah, I go back and revisit it in that that actually worked for me, and that that that's a that's a good thing that that they that they added into the film. <sighs> that's a good question. Um, I feel like I remember there was something I like, but I can't remember what it is. Uh, I'll tell you what I, I do like. I mean, yeah, you they go first. You go first. they nail the Quicksilver scene again, like that scene yep. when he rescues everybody scene. out of the mansion. As is, as mm-hmm. is, it's 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 bigger. It's more bombastic. It's not you know it's not groundbreaking because they had already done it in Days of Future Past, but. I like it a lot because it, it does just up the ante even more. And he has to rescue like every student out of the school. Um, but yeah. he does so with ease. Really cool scene there. So that that's one piece of it. Like anytime this movie might be on in the background because I'm never 100 percent paying attention to it. That scene always mm-hmm. gets me to stop and fully focus and pay attention on it. Yeah, I remember now it was actually the scene right before that. That's actually the Cerebro yeah, yeah. scene. Mm-hmm. I was like, y'all are going crazy. The whole yeah, that whole thing I think I think was really good, man. Um, of them just just, just anytime they use the rebro, they're usually probably doing something pretty fire. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I actually like to see it right before that when uh yeah, and then everybody pulls up. I'm like, well shit, it's Apocalypse versus all these X Men. What the hell's about to go down? So I, and I like I, I even like the idea of like havoc causing the um causing the explosion, yeah. but right before that where he's like. Ah, what's going on? Wreak havoc, and he has to destroy Cerebro on the inside. I was like, that shit's hard. Yeah, I, that's actually one of my favorite parts of the movie. Yeah. Um. Also, just want to quickly mention Cody Smith McPhee, who plays Nightcrawler in the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. first time we saw Nightcrawler since X Two. Um, and and yep. actually pretty good. You know, in terms of like the effects and the look, I thought he was he was solid. Looks great. Looks really great. Um, and and the makeup, all of that stuff was really really cool. So um, definitely want to also you know shout him out as like one of the newer cast members. Um, but the movie, it, it, it didn't do the best, per se. It made a lot of money, but it was a drop-off from Days of Future Past. It ultimately made $543.9 million at the global box office, making 27% less than Days of Future Past. So a uh, pretty significant drop-off there. Um, and critically, it did not do that much better. 
approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and the film has a weighted average score of 52 out of 100, and an A minus cinema score from from audiences, which is higher than the the first class cinema score. The first class, nuts. That, that don't make what are y'all watching? That don't make any sense to me. Um, but <laughs> they 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 had now you know put out a movie that just wasn't all that great it wasn't the most well received and also they made allusions to this next movie that was going to be dark phoenix which they were starting to set up in this particular film (laughs) 